What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? And now let's roll our clock all the way back to 1991 as we check out this amazing Mazda RX-7 R1 plastic model kit from Tamiya Japan. This is a 124 scale, highly detailed sports car series model kit. It's a static display model. That means it doesn't have an electric motor in there. It has highly detailed engine bay and interior, realistic rubber like tires. It is ready to assemble and it's meant for kids ages 10 and up. So again, we get this really nice drawn out image and an image of our motor. On this side of the box, we see a wonderful top view of our Mazda model kit painted in yellow. Then we get some specifications on the kit written in Japanese. And here we have our wonderful 138 rotary turbo engine. And turning the box onto the other side, we can see a wonderful red Mazda with uh, the side view, front view, and rear view of the car. So now let's take the lid off the box and see what's inside. And right away we get to see a wonderful offer for the Tamiya Club of Canada. Join now. <laughs> this model kit's from 1992. So. And then we get our instruction sheet, which Danny the dog will take a look at. There's a decal sheet inside there. Here's our nice tires. Everything is in a wonderful bag so that nothing gets lost. There's our glass components. And that was for the body. There's our chrome wheels and some body components. And then in this bag, we get more body components, interior tub, all kinds of things. There's our chassis underneath, molded in black, so you don't really have to paint much, although I recommend painting everything. And then there's our wonderful Mazda body. And then down here, we've got, well, that's printed on the bottom of the box, some more uh, specifics in Japanese. So let's move this out of the way and let Danny the dog take a look at those instructions. Hello everybody, this is Danny the Dog, Star Model Car Reporter here. Just to let you know all the info on our Mazda RX-7R1 instruction sheet. So I'm going to just get the pointer in my mouth here, and then we'll use the dub over mic so that you know what I'm saying. Okay, here we have the Mazda... Oh yeah, turn on the overdub mic. All right. Here we have the Mazda RX-7R1. And as you can see, you've got the wonderful photo of the built-up model down here. And then you've got a wonderful write-up about the Mazda Motor Company and uh, all their history and the history of this car. It says uh, it came out in October 1991. And then uh, here we got it in German and in French, I believe, and then in Chinese or Japanese down here. Now, I always liked this section of the instruction sheet. This is the how to uh, build a model. But in the Japanese models, they always have this guy holding the sign here, and then they show you the types of glue to use and all that. And then all your paint colors down here, these match the Tamiya paints. And again, I find this really wonderful. So panels one and two show us how to build our engine and then how to install it in the chassis. So first off, we've got our right and left hand side of the engine block, and then our front cover will glue on there. We've got this wonderful serpentine belt, and then we've got our intake all here which drop on the top of the engine. Now down here we've got our brake master cylinder and the reservoir bottle that glues onto the chassis back here in this slot and then we've got this component which I believe looks like our windshield wiper bottle. I'm not too sure on that. And there's our front of our chassis. It shows you what colors to paint all these components before installing your engine over here and uh, then it shows you to paint the top of the shock towers and the front air dam and all that other wonderful stuff. Panel 3 shows the attaching support strut being dropped into place. Now it comes up here on our chassis, so that means that there's some air induction going in underneath, and then the wonderful hoses hook onto our engine block there, and that one comes in here to the front. So that's our, our radiator, I believe. No, air intake again. And then back here, we've got another brace which drops across the uh, two shock mounted points there. Panel four shows our rear suspension assembly. And this looks very much like the Jaguar style independent rear axle and the Corvette style independent rear axles. Um, you got your drive shaft molded into your differential housing. And then here you've got your universal joints going out. This is the support with the A-arms and everything in there. 
And then you've got your shock absorbers and your rear end going on. This is sort of McPherson strut style. And then this nice piece goes over the top. Then you've got these poly caps which pop in behind our brake drums and go onto the rear axle housings. Panel 5 shows our rear axle assembly being dropped into the back of our chassis. And then here you get your wonderful exhaust pipe system going in and that clicks into the hole here and onto our engine block. Panel 6 shows our front end going together and here you've got your king pins and again the rubber style poly cap and then you've got your front disc brakes with calipers and you do the same for the other side and then you pop them into this A-arm assembly and there's your tie rod back there with the rack and pinion style steering. Panel 7 shows our front axle assembly being dropped down into the chassis. There, first you put on your McPherson struts and there should be little holes that line up underneath. Actually, it looks like, yeah, it passes right through the assembly arms. And then over here you get the top plate which mounts down and that would uh, mount on the tips of the McPherson struts. Oh well, yeah, you can see it goes through this little hole here on that upper A-arm. So that'll lock all your steering in place. And then this is a guard to protect the engine from stones underneath. Panel 8 shows how we attach our rear wheels. And the one thing I like about these Tamiya kits is the wheel is like really deep and the tire is nice and squishy so you just push that on there. And then there's pins in the back of the wheels and those go into the rubberized poly caps and then all this will spin and rotate nicely. And it says to note the tire rotation direction. So again, much like the Corvettes, you have the pattern on there, and that's got to go a certain way. Now I like this panel because this has our interior and body colors, and uh, just how they linked up on the real cars. So for example, you could paint your model vintage red, and put in the black cloth upholstery, or black leather, or even tan leather inside there. If you're building the model black, you use black cloth, tan, or even a red leather. And then if you're doing your car in competition yellow, you get the black cloth, the black leather, and the red leather. So again, really cool stuff. Now here in panel 9, it shows how your interior goes together. You've got a body tub going in here, and uh, the bucket seats pop in onto the floor. And then you've got your pedals here, which are separate, which is always nice. There's your center console with your gear stick lever, and that will go on into there. There you've got your dashboard and your steering column and your steering wheel. And this shows you decal placements for the instruments inside. Now as we scroll the instruction sheet downward a bit, you can see how you paint your black cloth because Tamiya has given you a nice paint example right here. And that would go on the bucket seats there. Now here you've got your completed dashboard assembly being dropped into the interior bucket and then your center console and you add in your parking brake lever. Panel 10 shows the interior bucket being mounted onto the chassis pan. And here we have our glass components being glued into the car. And it shows you how to attach your headlights right in there. And then how to paint the uh, flat black down here on the window. And you get some nice windshield wipers and a rear view mirror and all that pops into place in the body. Panel 10 shows how to put the chassis into the body. So first you uh, link it into the back and then you swing it up into the front here. Panel 13 shows our front turn signal and parking lamps being glued into place, and then our mirror housing and our chrome mirrors popping in there, and it also shows you where to paint all the little side marker lamps. Then we've got our hood going on down here, and our license plate shroud. Panel 14 shows our rear window going on, and then you put on your windshield wiper, there's the rear taillight panel which drops into place from the outside. And then there it's showing you how to apply the paint onto the RX-7 emblem. And if we just move our instruction sheet downward a little bit here, we can see we've got our taillights going in place. That's how you paint them. Then our rear spoiler and rear backup lights and the license plate. Our final panel on the back of the instruction sheet shows you where to put on all the markings and gives you little tips on painting the Mazda RX-7 R1. So there's our side view and you get these little decals going in on your wheels and then one on the front and then there's our front view and uh, all that great stuff. So now let's take a look at our plastic parts with Trevor. 
Thank you very much for that lead-in, Danny. All right, let's take a look at our Mazda RX-7 R1 body. Again, you get a wonderful little body from Tamiya Japan. You can see the excellent detail on the sides of the body. There's our front end looking nice and evil, <laughs> ready for a race. Now, as we look underneath, I don't see any of those mold marks like AMT and Ravel and Monogram have. There is a uh, serial number on there, which is always nice. Looks like I did sand a little bit of the flash off the bottom of this kit, then promptly stuck it back in the bag. Now there is a bit of a seam line going up in here. I'm not sure if that's an actual body seam line, so you're going to have to do a little research. But there is another one here on the corner, which I believe is supposed to be sanded off and rounded. Again, wonderful looking detail. Even the hood has the proper kind of double bump. I don't know if you can see that, but that's supposed to be there like that. There's a little section here to remove on that cross brace. But overall, again, a really wonderful work by Tamiya Japan. I mean, did you expect any less? This parts tree includes a lot of our interior components like our dashboard and our interior bucket. And then we've got the suspension components down here. There's our steering column as well. So let's just bring this up into the camera. I'm gonna have to turn this over. Now the door panels here don't have too much interior molding onto them, but this is a very nice crisp and really flash free type of uh, casting. Now there are mold marks. Some of them are under the seats and some of them are up there on the carpet. There's not much of a carpet texture in there. Uh, now for our dashboard, again, it looks really wonderful. There's all the instruments and uh, the radio and all that kind of stuff. There's our undercarriage, the uh, suspension components for front and rear, that rear differential up there. Again, excellent work. You can see just how wonderful the uh, molding is on these parts. Now I know black is really hard to see in the camera. There's the uh, center console right there with all the gear stick levers and everything else. And our steering column with our turn signals. So again, really wonderful work by Tamiya Japan. Now here we have our second parts tree and you'll notice something here that's a bit repetitive. We have another dashboard. Now what makes this cool is that here, you've got your right and left hand side dashboards. So you can do this as a Japanese or Australian, or even, I do believe the French are that way, uh, type of car, or you can do it as the North American style. So again, really excellent from Tamiya. They didn't have to throw in an extra dashboard, but they did just for us, because they love us. <laughs> I don't know. And speaking of which, you also get a reverse gear shift console in there as well because we're gonna be shifting this thing differently from right hand to left hand. So there's our engine block there and the steering wheel. And then that goes on top of our engine. Again, I'm not too familiar with the Wankel rotary engine. So I'm not sure where all the components go as compared with a regular, you know, V8 or whatever. And then that's got the Mazda logo on that top of the box there. Don't know if you can see that. But again, excellent work from Tamiya. Not too much on the mold marks on the back. So again, should be easy to clean up and install in your model. Now here we have the undercarriage, the chassis as you will. This is a unibody type construction vehicle. So that would mean the frame rails are off the sides here, molded into the rocker panels and all of that kind of stuff. So there's your bucket seats and yet again, a different steering wheel. So make sure you really take a look at your instructions to uh, know which steering wheel you got. This one looks like a rally type wheel. The other one looked more like a conventional Mazda type of wheel. There's our radiator at an angle downward, the bottom of our engine with the transmission molded in place. So that actually saves it quite a bit of uh, mucking around. Firewalls molded in place as well. A couple of mold marks in there. There's the top of the shock towers. The shop of the talk towers. <laughs> anyway, uh, quite a bit of mold marks in there. So just sort of sand it to clean them up. They don't look like they're too uh, obstructive for anything. Oh, there's our rear view mirror there. And again, really wonderful work. This parts tree includes our hood, our disc brakes front and rear, the rear spoiler, the side mirrors, McPherson struts for up front, license plate shroud, 
windshield wipers, and our big exhaust system. Again, really wonderful work. This should be easy to paint. In fact, you can almost just paint this whole thing aluminum and uh, maybe a little bit of steel on there. But what wonderful detail. Excellent disc brakes on there. A couple of mold marks off the back, some mold marks under the hood, but again, easy to clean. There's no uh, actual hood texture under here. That's interesting. I wonder if that's what it's like on the real car. But overall, I'll say this is a, another fine example of Tamiya engineering. Now here we have the clear components. Look at that nice taillight housing. Again, really wonderful work. You've got the little uh, defroster bars in the back of the rear window, side windows here for the front glass. So once you build the model, it'll be completely enclosed on those side windows. So if you want a window down, I would just, you know, carefully take a saw and cut off one of the wings. So you'd have a down window, but this will keep the dust out. So. <laughs> And then there's our turn signals and headlamps. Now, remember in some of those earlier videos, I said that like AMT brought out this uh, 1962 Thunderbird to compete with Tamiya Japan and Ravel. So in the 90s, this is what was going on. Tamiya kept coming out with these really excellent model kits and Ravel and AMT, they were still pumping out their old stuff. Same with Monogram. So there was this real push on back in the 90s to make the American domestic model kits match up to this high quality, like this high quality of Tamiya Japan kits. So that's what the rage was going on back in the 90s. And then uh, for round two, sadly, it or AMT back in the day, AMT Ertled, got bought up by RC2, and RC2 just wanted to put out diecast, and they didn't care about you know, competing on this level with the model kits. So they basically brought out all the old, old, old stuff and dumped the team that was making the good new stuff. So that's what I'm constantly referring to with that thing. And all this happened right around the early 90s and the late 80s. So I thought I would display our chrome components with the tires and our poly caps because it, this is all the chrome you get in the kit. So what's nice about these is you've got these really great deep dish Mazda RX-7 type wheels. Look at how deep those dishes are. But again, the quality on there is really nice. And on the back, you've got those long pins. Now those long pins are gonna go and press into the poly caps. And like Danny was saying, you take your tire and just squish it on down there. These things are really squishy, as you can see. Again, really excellent. Now, in case you're wondering, these tires are Advan HF Directionals. And again, that's a uh, metric type tire. So there it is. And you can see just how the um, tread pattern aligns up in that nice direction. Let's move my thumb out of the way. There you go. Again, really excellent tires. Wonderful work by Tamiya Japan. Hey everybody, it's Danny the Dog back again, and I'm just going to do our decal sheet to wrap up the video. One thing I do want to say is click that join button down below and uh, that will get your name in the credits. So if you like that kind of thing, it helps support us as well. Anyway, so what we've got here is we've got a window tint decal and then we've got our instrument gauges going on there for our dashboard. We've got a nice Mazda dealer plate and then this California 2XL TO64 license plate. And then look at these nice Mazda logos. And then you got your RX-7 as well. So a really wonderful decal sheet and a really wonderful model. Well, I hope you enjoyed that look at our Tamiya 1991 Mazda RX-7 R1 model kit. And if you've built this model back in the past, let us know how you enjoyed putting it together. Was it easy? Was it difficult? Did it live up to the Tamiya standards? Let us know down in the comment section below. And if you want to see what great, amazing Japanese cars we have available, or even domestic North American ones, check out our website at www.monster-hobbies.ca. We ship worldwide. And I'm going to leave a little link down here that you can click on at the end of our video that takes you directly to our model car page, just so you don't have to go and look around on our website. Thank you everybody for watching our model car unboxing video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel with all your friends and family. And if you really want to show your support, click that join button right below this video. Until next time everyone, 
Happy model building!